In this video, we will discuss how to use Hess's Law. Now, we've done Hess's Law before, which uh, Hess's Law talks about how to take values from different reactions that add together to be the overall reaction. So for example, we have a uh, reaction A and we have reaction B, and those reactions combine in a certain way to get your overall reaction. And so what Hess's Law does is it's like, okay, well, if I know the K values for my two reactions that I'm referencing, how can I combine the Ks to get the K for the new reaction? So to get these uh, reactions to add up, we've got to first figure that out. And so what I do is I say, okay, N2O is actually on this side of the reaction and the coefficients match. So what that tells me right now is that I'm probably going to flip this reaction, but we'll have to wait and see. And then um, if I had this reaction flipped, that would really be N2O going to 1 half O2 plus N2. That would cause a half of oxygen to uh, go away. So that guy goes away, and this goes down to 1 half, which is what I need, so that looks good. And then I have two NOs, and so those actually are on the correct side with the correct coefficient, so I don't think I need to mess with reaction A. At the same time, nitrogens, they would cancel, which is what I need because I have no N2 in my overall reaction. So what that means is that what I want is I need to combine from reaction A and from reaction B my K values. So what that is, is when you can com combine K values, you end up, you end up multiplying them, okay? So this is going to be Ka, K from reaction A, that's what I mean by that, times KB, but I've already written since we're flipping it, it's the reciprocal or 1 divided by KB, which is, this is going to end up being 4.1 times 10 to the minus 31 from KA times 1 divided by, or uh, times 1 divided by 2.4 times 10 to the minus 18. And the math I get here is 1.71 times 10 to the minus 13, and so this is a non-spontaneous process because k is less than 1. Okay, that is review. Now, how do you combine delta H values for a reaction? How do we do that? And so um, when we add reactions, we multiply their k values, but if our value has a delta, so like a delta H, a delta S, and a delta G, then what we're going to do is we're just going to add the delta H's together, or the delta G's, or the delta S's. So what I want to do is I want to first figure out how these two reactions, so I'll call this reaction A and reaction B, how they add together. Um, carbon is here and it's here and their coefficients match and so I think I'm going to keep A the same but we'll have to prove it. Uh, oxygens right now maybe I'll flip this one and let's see what I get. I get CO2 going to CO plus one half O2. That would allow this oxygen to get, go away and be left with one half O. At the same time we'd have carbon monoxide which I want and then um, my carbon dioxide actually cancels, and that makes sense because I don't have any carbon dioxide in my overall reaction. So because I'm flipping this, it's not a reciprocal for delta H. This is now positive 283.0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take delta H of A and just add it to delta H of B. Delta H of A is negative 393.5 kilojoules per mole. Delta H of B is 283.0 kilojoules per mole. And when I add those two uh, together, what I end up getting is negative 110.5 kilojoules per mole, which means that reaction is exothermic. Okay, let's look at another one. 
we have these two reactions and we need to get them to add up to be this overall reaction. So I'm going to call this reaction A. I'm going to call this reaction B. I'm going to find NO. It's right there, so I don't think I'm going to end up flipping reaction B. O2 and O2, so that looks good. And then into O4, but it's on the wrong side, so I could get rid of it by flipping this. And so because I'm going to flip that, and actually the nitrogen dioxides would cancel then because they'd be on opposite sides of each other, what I know is that for my overall delta H, I'm going to take delta H of A plus delta H of B. Delta H of A is not 57.9 kilojoules per mole, but it's negative 57.9 kilojoules per mole. And delta H of B does not change, so that's going to be plus negative 113.1 kilojoules per mole. And so when I add those together, I end up getting negative 171 kilojoules per mole, and that is exothermic.